Plano, if you're watching, please just make us fly guys one of these. This should not be hard to make. Put some sort of rod system where you can take flies on and off and put it in the file box and every musky fly fisherman will buy one from you. I promise. What's going on everybody? Gunner here. Uh, today's video is all about how to store your truly massive flies. Uh, and this is the OG fly bucket. Uh, we'll dive into this a little bit. I had someone from Patreon ask me uh, to showcase this bucket. Um, and one of the cool things about Patreon is if you ask, you shall receive. <laughs> uh, so thanks to everybody on Patreon who supports the channel. It means the world to me. Um, and so we're going to dive into the bucket a little bit. But what's even cooler, I think, is the fact that I just redesigned the bucket. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at that. It's truly awesome and it'll run you about $15 to make. So uh, we're going to dive into that and in fact by the end of this video I'm going to show you exactly how to make that yourself. Uh, go over a few considerations, get you the exact file box if you want to even get that net picky about it. So I'm going to highlight all the different systems that I use for storing my flies, uh, like bulk storage versus boat storage versus uh, hip packs and weighed bag storage, right? So I have a few different uh, solutions for all of these different things. So I'm gonna try to give you guys some context here, uh, just about me, uh, and this might not apply to you, and I'm gonna try to make it short because I feel like this is like some weird winding path of why I am the way I am, and good luck figuring that out. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, but my guess is this is probably what you'd expect would be a good solution. This is a slip foam box, so you got just foam on either side. The foam has cuts in it that you wedge the hook into. You typically back it in by the bend. You wedge the hook in there so that you don't actually stab the foam. The boxes last nearly forever because the foam doesn't get holes poked in it. A great solution for kind of smaller flies. In fact, I think it's the best solution for nymphs and dry flies. I think that's truly where it shines. Now this is a Cliff Bugger Barn. They also have a Bugger Beast Junior and a Bugger Beast. And I think the key word amongst all of those in every company that's made variations of that solution to this big fly storage problem is the word bugger. Uh, I think it's very applicable to the trout industry and I think that that's about it. Um, the other thing I would kind of highlight is if you're a guide, I do think this is a really good solution because the guides are always trying to problem solve and problem solve through a client. It's not them fishing or them making the decisions, but they are trying to get somebody else on fish. And so they usually have to know all the patterns they have. They have to have all their patterns in the boat. They have to know how many colors of each one. They have to keep an inventory tab on everything going on so that they can consistently put other people on fish. That's not the way I fish. The way I fish is kind of exploratory, right? When I tie flies, no two flies that I tie are the same. Like, just look at this wheel. Different, 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 different. These are the same recipe, different color combo. Actually, no, they're not the same recipe. I changed the tail. Different, 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 different. I just, everything is the same, but everything is different. I always have one foot in the known, one foot in the unknown, and I like to explore fly tying, which means every time I go fishing, I am either fishing new water, or a new line, or for a new species, or with new flies, or with a new leader build, or with a new recipe, or during a different time of year. Something is different, because that's what makes it fun. I like to explore. Um, I don't want to necessarily have a box of finger mullets and go fish finger mullets because I already know they work. I know they're very successful. I've already come up with my color combos. I've already put hundreds of smallmouth on this. It's not very fun for me to do that anymore. I want to see what else they will eat. So my boxes typically look like this. This is typically what I run. I put everything in Plano boxes, even my small flies. This is every fly from my four weight chronicles and every variation thereof. There's probably 50 different patterns in here. This is all of my chosen ones and all the different color combos, both high and tight bulkhead, silicone weighted, unweighted dropper jig, the works, right? These are all different jig flies, different weights, different color materials, synthetics versus naturals. This is so easy to pack. Like, hey, I might need jig flies, I might need chosen one, I might need four weight, it goes in a bag, I go fishing. Um, and this is how I store them in bulk. <laughs> I just have a huge massive tote 
that has a bunch of musky flies in it and some more musky flies in it some more musky flies in it uh, a bunch of weedless musky flies in it you get the point right and so if I need to let's say make a big trip like I'm gonna drive like four or five hours somewhere and I don't know the conditions, I don't know the river, I don't know the water clarity, the depth, what lines I'm gonna need. Now you gotta solve a lot of problems. And instead of trying to figure out my fly boxes here, I can throw this in my truck. I can drive down to the water. I can observe the conditions. I can take, you know, 10 flies out of here, put them in one box and go fish. And if I need to regroup, I regroup. You head back to the truck, you reassess, you refill out a box, whatever you do. But this is my solution because Plano boxes are cheap, they're inexpensive. You can get so many different size slots and lengths uh, and you know, four inch ones and five inch ones and seven inch ones. It's really easy to fill this out, get every working fly you have, every idea you've ever tied. You know, there's no two flies in this entire Plano box that are the same, there's no two. It's just a big jumbled mess of ideas. And so whenever I want to go fishing and test stuff, I just grab one of these. Now, one of my other favorite solutions, uh, especially if you are a wade fisherman, um, ignore the fact that this is not a $150 fly fishing hip bag, but it's like a $15 one for Fleet Farm. But let's say I wanted to go musky fishing with this guy. You're like, this doesn't fit a Bugger Beast or a Bugger Beast Junior, or this doesn't flit, fit a, a big Plano box. Like, you know, I believe in minimalism. I believe in just taking the bare necessities. Like you're not gonna bring every fly with you every single time, that's kind of ludicrous. What do you do? Uh, my favorite solution is these clear, crystal clear hanger zip bags from clearbags.com. Clearbags.com, it's the two and a half by 12. Uh, these are what I used to use to ship flies in. But what you do is you take, let's say, you know, six, seven flies, fill them with air, take your fly, shoot it down to the bottom. And now that fly is just neatly packed away. All of your stuff's completely protected. Your hooks are completely protected. Um, and it just keeps them all separate. And I'll do a few more here, like this big bucktail beast. And this one even has a treble hook. Completely protected, no big deal. All that bucktail works good and safe. Cheers to like the sparsest beast I've ever tied. Right in there. This, oh, this one's one of my favorite. This one got a good musky like three years back. I just love the color combo. I tied that at the Great Water Show in Minneapolis like three years ago. Right, so now I have all these flies. I got three beasts and a mega jerk. And I can just tuck those flies into my hip bag. And now I don't need, I don't need a box. <laughs> I don't need anything. The only thing that would be in here would be, you know, 40 pound mono, some bite tippet and then have you know jaw spreaders and pliers in that front pocket because that's all you need. The goal is minimalism. Just bring the bare necessities and then your flies are all kept safe, organized, one a piece, nothing's destroyed or ruined. So that's one of my favorite and I think easiest solutions, um, especially for the wade fishermen. <clears throat> so jumping into the fly bucket here, it's looking a little sad because I made my new version of it so I've stripped off a bunch of flies. Um, but you know, I was trying to come up with hanging space because what typically happens to me is I tie all winter long. No two of these are the same. I have a bunch of ideas and they're just in a jumbled mess hanging off of everything in my office. It's a complete mess and I needed a way to organize them, hang them, keep them in pristine shape, protect all of my high quality bucktail work. And it's a cool little display thing. And then just like the Plano boxes, when I go fishing, I can either A, grab this, throw it in the truck. When I get to wherever I'm going, I can make a decision, grab five of these and go fishing. Or if I'm going solo fishing in my boat or somewhere where this, because this takes up quite a bit of room, I can just throw this in my boat and go. Now what I did here is I drilled shallow holes in my bucket so that I could put kind of pressure on my wire, run it in, run it back, run it in. Uh, after like a year and a half, that wasn't enough storage space, so then I put some wires that kind of weave through it. I put epoxy on all the joints so the wire was pretty rigid. I just crimped it, right? So there's a crimp sleeve and a crimp sleeve. And then I just put snaps on it so that I could snap flies on and off. Now the problem with this is these aren't protected from wind. 
uh, and so when I'm under power in my boat going 20 mile an hour, they blow all over the place like, like crazy. It's quite frustrating. Um, and I could close the snaps, but that's a lot of work and it hurts my fingernails. Uh, so I don't do that. And so every once in a while I gotta slow down and grab the bucket, make sure it doesn't fly all over the place. Um, but it's a cool solution for hanging space. You'll still see it in my office. I'm still gonna put flies on it, uh, but it's kind of retired for the moment. This is gonna stay in the office because this is what my new solution is. I think it's pretty slick. Uh, it's based off of a different product called Just In Case. Uh, if you have the money, I think they look absolutely phenomenal, like a stunning way to store some flies, but they're basically all vertical hanging storage for your truly big pike and musky flies. Um, <clears throat> and so I'll hit quite a few highlights here, but let me just show you how slick this is, ready? Boom. All my beast flies, all of my weedless musky flies. This one is all of my musky doubles and their variations therein. It's kind of just a mixed bag of everything I have left, but it's a bunch of synthetics, uh, stinger hook, kind of squimpish beast, mega jerks, and some composite T-bone looking thing that I was working on, right? So I can uh, pretty simply store all these flies hang them vertically, protect all my work. So it's just really easy to organize everything. And the wires just slip through the hole and slip out of the hole. That's all it is. So let's say you wanted to grab one of the weedless ones. You can run it kind of two ways. I just have them slide on and slide off. So like if you wanted the one, this white one, you'd just take that off and then you take these other two, you put them back on, it doesn't take that much time. You got the fly you wanted. Uh, if you wanted like one in the middle, these ones are just on a snap, right? So I can take that one off, tie it onto my rig, put this back in my bucket. When I'm done fishing, back on it goes. Everything's right on and off. And so this just has snaps. If I have like small hook eyes, they just have snaps that run the length of the wire. If I got big hook eyes that are easy to thread, then I just thread them through. So it's a really simple solution. And then you just drop them back into the bucket. Bend the wire. Bends the wire, get in that tiny hole, you. Why are you giving me a hard time, man? I'm making a video. There you go. So the cool thing about this is they're obviously all protected from wind. They don't get blown the heck around. You got that center grab handle and you got a new place to put some absolutely sick Bramers Custom Flies original stickers. Yeah. So all you need, this is Office Depot Portable file box dimensions basically 12 by 14 by 10. Uh, what i really like the height is the 12 it's 11.7 so you're going to get nearly all of your flies off the bottom uh, if you wanted to you could drill some drainage holes in here i don't really plan on putting wet flies in there i typically throw my wet flies somewhere in my boat uh, and then reorganize things when i get home but you could put drain holes in here if you wanted or you could put little rubber furniture feet on here if you didn't want it sliding around uh, just some ideas there now what makes it truly special is the fact that it has a double row right here of plastic and we're going to take a drill bit it's pretty tiny this little guy and we're going to make four holes one two three four at that top row just on the inside of that and then we're going to take wire now if you've watched any of my big musky videos you know i make a lot of my own shanks and that's all i use i just have shank building wire this is 51 thousandths of an inch torsion straightened stainless steel it has a little bit of memory that i'm going to bend out but i'm going to cut this to basically spanned the full width of this so it'll be like 13 and three quarters inches and i'm going to cut four of them straighten them drill some holes shove them in place and that's it Just grab it by the middle and spin it. See how straight they are. Versus this. <laughs> when you make the holes, make them as close to the top as possible. That way you get the full 12 inches to hang your flies. It's not a big difference, but it's a little one. And then we'll go two in a little bit. Go over here. 
the box is done. <laughs> so all you got to do is take your wire, you poke it through one hole, then you put a little bend in it to get it to go in the other. Because you cut it the right length, it has that much overlap, so even with some flies on there and some good weight, the wire doesn't fall out. But when you need to get to the flies, you just put a little bend in it. Then you can take the whole wire out with every fly that's rigged on it. I'm going to be here for the next 10 minutes organizing musky flies. Don't mind me, uh, but I'm going to get them all on my... Ep oh, this one? i got to show you this one next. It's the best casting beast fly on the planet. Look at that. Look at that row of musky goodness, right? So sweet. So that right there is the next generation of Bramer's fly buckets. And you have all this real estate now to put some sick new decals from your boy. Get them up there. Get them up there. Uh, but yeah, super simple solutions, right? Hanging, hanging uh, file box, hanging bucket, Plano boxes in a tote, uh, clear Ziploc bags for all you Wade guys. But those are my solutions. That's how I do it. Hope that gives you some ideas. Hope you can just follow along if you want one of these things. Plano, if you're watching, please just make us fly guys one of these. This should not be hard to make. Put some sort of rod system where you can take flies on and off and put it in the file box. And every musky fly fisherman will buy one from you. I promise. <laughs> so, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one.